Welcome back. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Abuja on Tuesday called on electoral offenders to have a rethink during the 2023 general elections because their days were already numbered. The commission also expressed optimism that the spate of electoral offenses, irregularities and violence would be brought to a halt after the enactment of the bill on the establishment of electoral offenses tribunal. I'm glad to see we have joining us Annex National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Fester Okoye Esquire. Uh, Mr. Okoye, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, what, what, what prompted INEC to make such a statement? Well, uh, you know, the commission has been canvassing for the establishment of an electoral offenses um, uh, a commission and tribunal uh, to handle the issue of arrest, uh, investigation, and prosecution of electoral offenders. And now, if you look at section 145 and 144 of the Electoral Act um, uh, 2022, you will see that the Independent National Electoral Commission has been given the power and the mandate uh, to prosecute uh, ele electoral offenders. And the commission prosecutes electoral offenders, one, based on report by its, um, uh, its officers, uh, two, uh, based on uh, reports and the recommendations by the Nigerian police force, and also based on recommendations uh, by uh, election uh, tribunals and, and courts of law. Uh, when an election a petition is being uh, a tried and uh, the uh, a judges discover uh, that a, an offense has been committed, it can be referred to the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, for prosecution. But looking at the whole matter holistically, uh, some of the electoral offenders are staff of the commission. And I think it will be imprudent, I imprudent uh, uh, and um, improper uh, for the commission to also be saddled with the responsibility and task of prosecuting its own, its own officers. Uh, that is not uh, uh, proper, and that is um, against all the known no laws of uh, natural justice. Uh, so we felt that uh, both at the financial level, uh, at the level of uh, capacity, and also at the level of uh, prosecuting electoral offenders properly, that an independent commission should be established uh, to deal with the issue of arrest, uh, investigation, and prosecution of electoral offenders uh, in a much more comprehensive and strategic manner. Mm. Uh, uh, Mr. Koye, you're, you're a lawyer, so very, very um, uh, qualified in the best position to, to give us an uh, uh, explanation regarding this. So with, with the enactment of this, this uh, law, of this bill, establishing establishing rather an electoral offenses tribunal now, w w how would this be different from what we've been having in the past well uh, you know, I, I was a member of the electoral reform committee uh, headed by the uh, honorable justice Uwes, former chief justice of nigeria and uh, in that particular electoral offenses commission uh, professor jega who later became the chairman of the uh, independent national electoral commission was a member uh, the Catholic Archbishop of uh, the Catholic Bishop of Soko Diocese, Sokoto Diocese uh, Bishop uh, Matthew Hassan Kuka, uh, was a member of that particular uh, commission and uh, electoral committee. And there were also other eminent Nigerians who were members members of that uh, uh, committee. We did recommend for the establishment of this particular commission, and we also provided a framework uh, for for its establishment. I was also a member of the uh, 2014 National Conference. Um, and the committee on, on political parties and electoral matters, uh, headed jointly uh, headed by um, uh, the former Senate president and uh, the form, two former Senate president, uh, uh, Senator Iyocha Ayo and um, uh, and uh, Ken Namani, also recommended that we should have the political parties and electoral offenses commission and tribunal uh, to deal with some of these issues. Uh, so the, what we are saying is that we need a, com a, a commission modeled after the ICPC or modeled after the EFCC uh, to be completely independent and check um, the burgeoning act of electoral impunity uh, in, the, in, in the country. And we recommended the framework uh, for the appointment of such um, members of that committee. We recommended the membership of, of that particular committee. And also we recommended on the ways and means through which each, each, each a function. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our report did not uh, was not acted upon. But the bill that has gone to the Senate, uh, uh, National Assembly, which the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has passed, uh, has addressed substantially uh, some of the issues. So we have made it very clear as a commission that, one, 
we want to concentrate on organizing, undertaking, and supervising election, that a separate agency should be saddled with the issue of uh, electoral offenses and electoral offenders. And you realize that during the election, there are some electoral offenses that are committed on the spot. So we need a commission that has the capacity to activate a mobile, a mobile court to deal with electoral offender offenses that are committed on election day. Because on election day, what you find out is that uh, some of the um, uh, police officers and some of the security officers that carry out this arrest come from different states of the Federation. And after the election, they move back to their states. So when an electoral offense is committed, it now becomes very, very difficult to get them back to the state where they serve for them to give evidence. Exhibit, uh, uh, we lose, lose exhibits, we lose um, critical evidence, and also we lose all the ingredients necessary to secure uh, a prosecution. So we need a separate agency to deal okay. with this issue. Okay. Uh, I know that in, in the past, INEC and you in particular, you have uh, lamented um, how INEC is overwhelmed at times with the volume of litigation and volume of cases that the commission has to deal with. And sometimes we wonder um, how the, co the commission and the federal government, uh, you know, is able to spend uh, amounts of money in, in handling these cases. Um, so you're saying that it is not just enough to enact or to pass this bill on the establishment of electoral offenses tribunal. You're saying that an agency uh, must be also set up as a vehicle to be able to implement the law, is what you're saying, and not INEC uh, doing this, because you have your hands uh, are full, is what you're saying, sir? Ex 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 exactly, that is the point. Now, if you look at the, 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 the configuration of the commission, if you look at the things the commission does, we deal with what I call pre-election litigation. These are matters that arise on a civil matter before the conduct of elections. After elections, we also deal with post-election litigation. Uh, these are matters that go before the various election tribunals. Our legal officers are involved in some of these things. And when we cannot cope, we uh, assign some of them uh, to external solicitors to handle. Now, there's also the issue of electoral offenses. So what we are saying is, yes, under Section 144 and Section 145, of the Electoral Act 2022, we've been given the power uh, to prosecute electoral offenders, but set up a completely different agency. That agency will recruit the requisite staff with the requisite expertise to deal with the issue of electoral offenders. That commission will also be saddled with the issue of investigation, with the issue of uh, or research. They will also be saddled with the task of prosecuting electoral offenders and that this is the only way we can break the cycle of electoral impunity in the, in the country. And oh. if, if this is done, I believe that uh, some of those who um, believe that they can commit electoral offenses with uh, some level of impunity and nothing will be done, uh, we have everything. But INEC has a legal department, uh, Mr. Fessor Zakoye. Um, you have a litigation and the prosecution department um, that should be able to handle things like this. Do we need to set up another agency in an era where we have scarce resources as far as government is concerned and you know people have said we need to prune down the size of government now it is this issue of pruning down that led the 2014 national conference into saying okay rather than saddle this agency with the task of only prosecuting electoral offenders let us add an additional responsibility to them in terms of registration and regulation of political parties so that they will have something doing all year long. Now, one thing you must realize is that our elections in Nigeria have been completely deregulated. They have been completely staggered. During the 20, um, 2020 regional election, we are only going to have governorship election in 28 states of the federation. In the rest of the states, we are going to have a stag uh, um, election at different times. As you are aware, in July, in, in June this year, we are going to have the, a, a, the governorship election. In July, we are going to have the Oshun governorship election. So our elections have been staggered. So this particular Electoral Offenses Commission, we have something doing all year, all year round. We have a litigation and prosecution department. This litigation and prosecution department also handle pre-election matters. And I want to tell you that even before the commencement of party primaries, we have over 200 matters already in court being handled by most of our legal officers in our legal department. And then the moment you are done with party primaries, the cases will 
become become higher. They have to be saddled with it. And then as we move towards the election and the election, election petition tribunals will begin to sit, uh, and people will begin to find matters. These same people in the litigation and prosecution department will be the ones that will handle some of these matters. So we are, what we are saying is, why not allow us uh, to specialize? Why not allow us to take the quantum of cases we can handle? Take the issue of prosecution of electoral offenders and give to a different agency, a different commission to handle. Because some of the electoral uh, uh, offenders are definitely going to be our staff. So why, how do, why do you expect us to prosecute members of the public, prosecute political party agents to engage in electoral malfeasance, and also prosecute our own staff? who are also engaged in electoral malpractices. So give it to a different agency. Yes, I, I acknowledge the fact that we have scarce resources in the country, uh, but this agency is also very, very key because it will help in sanitizing our electoral process and also send a very strong signal and a very strong message uh, to those who commit electoral offenses and get away with it that electoral impunity does not pay and that we must find ways and means of breaking the cycle of electoral impunity in the country. All right. Uh, it, for, for now, this this commission has not been set up. It is an idea that has been, you know, put forward by ANEC and by stakeholders. Will this be implemented with the 2023 general elections? Um, if yes, do you foresee this bringing down the level of electoral offences in the country? Well, uh, the, as, as a commission, we plan and plan well. As a commission, we strategically engage some of the issues that we have been uh, uh, saddled with. So if we do not have an Electoral Offenses Commission and Tribunal uh, before the uh, conduct of the 2023 election, our legal, uh, uh, and prosecution, our legal uh, prosecution, the litigation and prosecution department, we still handle issues around electoral offenses. And as of today, uh, we are farming up guidelines and procedures uh, for the prosecution of um, electoral offenders and how electoral offenses uh, and their prosecution should be initiated within the level of the commission and who we have responsibility uh, for handling some of these matters. And so we are taking it on board. As far as we are concerned, there's no electoral offenses uh, uh, commission, commission, commission act in, in place. And since there's none, none in place, under section 145 and section 144 of the electoral act, uh, 2022, 20, uh, we'll be given that particular responsibility and we are going to uh, uh, proceed with that particular responsibility. But as you know, when the different agencies involved in arrest, a different agencies involved in investigation, the only thing we get at the end of the day will be a report, for instance, from the police relating to the, the arrest they have made, relating to the investigations they have, been, they, uh, they have made, and then we now go to court to prosecute. Sometimes getting witnesses and getting evidence becomes a problem. So you hear matters being struck out from the uh, uh, struck out on the basis of lack of diligent prosecution or on the basis of the fact that we can't get the requisite evidence uh, that will lead to successful um, uh, prosecution. So we want a situation where somebody will be arrested properly, comprehensively, and adequately investigated and also prosecuted very professionally and with some level of best parties. Yes, but, but Mr. Kwe, whilst that is not done, and of course you've, you've rightly said the commission is not folding its hands um, and you've already been proactive, but do you foresee the level of electoral practices based on the enactment of this, this bill um, going down? If this bill is enacted and politicians, uh, political talks, uh, the sponsors of uh, political talk rate, those engaged in electoral malfeasance, our staff who may like to connive, connive or collude with politicians, we have a rethink if we have this particular uh, com commission in place. But if we, we don't have this particular commission in place, they will see things that it is business as usual, and at the end of the day, they can get away with whatever they are doing on the basis of the fact that the commission will be saddled with the task of organizing, undertaking, and supervising elections, and will not pay adequate attention uh, to the prosecution of electoral offenders. So I believe that if we have a commission, uh, the level of electoral offenses uh, 
being committed and the le uh, level of electoral offenders we we go down. Right? Right. It's, it's, I, I, I think I have that feeling. You're right. In, indeed, you are also sharing the same sentiments as um, the former INA Commissioner Tao Jaga, who also has said some things about this calling. I'm sure for his, his from his own experience uh, for INA to be allowed to focus on electoral matters during the research and organizing elections. Uh, 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 Mr. Okoye, before you go, um, has a Chief Executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Buba Marwa, been uh, inter interacting and cooperating or with, with INEC or has even written to INEC um, regarding this 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 talk of conducting drug integrity tests on aspirants seeking to contest for political office offices come 2023. I guess you may have heard about that news. <laughs> Well, you know, we, we have uh, what we call the Interagency Consultative Committee uh, on Election Security. And it's made up of um, the heads of the different um, uh, security agencies. We also have um, uh, 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 the heads of uh, ICPC, EFCC, NYC, and the other security agencies involved. Uh, so there's a possibility that um, at the next meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security that will take place after the, after the Salah break, that uh, there's a possibility that such may be canvassed uh, 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 before the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security. Uh, but you know, the um, NDLE and uh, all these other agencies are separate agencies, and they have their man man mandate, and we will not interfere uh, in relation to their mandate. But mm. we are going to focus on our principal responsibility, which is to organize, undertake, and supervise election. All right. Um, I, I would have wanted to ask what kinds of drugs you'd be testing for, <laughs> but I wouldn't bore you with that. Uh, I'll leave that question for Buba Marwa. But um, um, if, if this were to, to work and uh, as parent is found um, to test or test positive uh, for, for banned substances, does this automatically mean that he or she is out? Um, of a of race to our electoral laws um, have anything to cover that? Well, uh, you know that the qualification to contest election is governed by uh, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as, 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 as amended. It has set out the qualifying criteria for people to contest various levels of offices. And it has also set out the disqualifying criteria uh, on which people can be disqualified. Uh, from from uh, contesting uh, elections, so we need to interrogate the provisions of the constitution uh, to see whether uh, failing a drug test uh, meets that uh, constitutional criteria. But I I know that um, lunatics, uh, certified lunatics, are not supposed to um, be allowed to contest election, and there are also other disqualifying criteria uh, provided in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But in terms of uh, failing a drug test, I don't know whether it's uh, one of the qualifying criteria or uh, disqualifying criteria. All right, all right. We, we, we look forward to that. I can, I can guarantee you that a lot of Nigerians will be looking forward to that. Um, uh, First Zakoi Esquire, thank you very much for your time. You've uh, delivered ever so eloquently, and we appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. All right. And thank you for staying with us. That's uh, as the size of a package right here on Plus Politics for today. We return tomorrow from our entire team reaching you live from our studios in Victoria, Lagos. My name is Kofi Patels. See you tomorrow. Good night.